Chest to waist ratios for men are normally distributed with a mean of 1.17 and a standard deviation of 0 0.08. What is the probability that a randomly selected male has a ratio higher than 1.32? What is the probability that a randomly selected male has a ratio higher than the ideal of 1.41? Okay, so we have a couple of key phrases here in this problem. Um, normally distributed tells us that we can use the bell curve to solve the problem. And then they go on to ask us for a probability. Of course, they say that twice because we're doing two separate problems in this problem. So let's try to figure out the uh, first one first. We'll use the bell curve um, to do that one. Okay, so putting my little bell curve outline there, let's draw the shape. Okay, now the mean and the standard deviation will be the same for both problems. It says that the mean is 1.17 and a standard deviation of 0 0.08. So 0 0.08, okay. Now, at that point, we wanna label a z-axis and an x-axis. The z-axis is centered at zero, of course. X-axis is centered at the mean of 1.17. All right, and the first problem asks is, what's the probability that a randomly selected male, notice just one male, has a ratio higher than 1.32? Well, 1.32 is to the right of 1.17, so I'm gonna draw that here. And it says higher than 1.32. That's gonna be higher than this number here, so we shade to the right. All right, now again, we cannot look up 1.32 on the z-chart directly because it's not a z-score, so we're going to need to convert it to a z-score first. So let's go ahead and do that. z is equal to x minus the mean over sigma. So therefore, we're gonna have 1.32 minus 1.17 over 0 0.08. Okay, so let's see what that gives us when we do that. So we'll have 1.32 minus 1.17. Divide that by 0 0.08 and we get the answer 1.875 and we'll round that to 1.88. 1.88. Okay, so 1.88 is the number. Okay, so 1.88 is the corresponding z-score that we need to look up and when we look that up we're going to get the area from here to here which is not the area we're looking for. So at that point we need to um, get that area for the white space here, and then do our subtraction to get the tail area. Remember, when you're looking for a tail area, you subtract from 0.5, which is the total area for half the curve, and that will give us the area in the tail. So let's go to the z-chart now and look up 1.88. Okay, so I have to find 1.88 on the curve. So we're gonna go move this table up a little bit till we see the 1.8 row. There's the 1.8 and the 1.9 row. And we want to go to 1.88, so we actually need to go to the next to last position there. That'd be this value here in the 0.08 row or column. So 1.88 gives you the value 0.4699. Okay, so we find the answer 0.4699. To get the overall area for this part of the curve, we have to do 0.5 minus that area in the white space, 4699. And we'll do a little old school barring like always here. So 10 take away nine is one, and then zero, then nine take away six is three, and then zero. So we get the answer 0 0.0301. So the area in here is 0 0.0301. So about 3% or so. All right, now. The next part of the question asks for the probability that a randomly selected male has a ratio higher than the ideal of 1.41, 1.41. Okay, so the ideal is 1.41. We're looking for the probability that somebody has a ratio higher than that. Okay, so let's go do that and see what that answer gives us. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna draw my bell curve. And we'll label the mean and the standard deviation like we always do. So 1.17 again and 0 0.08. The mean for z is 0. The mean again for x is 1.17. And then we're going to be looking for 
the probability that someone is higher than the ideal of 1.41. So 1.41 we'll draw over here. And higher than that, again, is the area in the tail. So if I look up 1.41, once I convert it to a z-score, I'll get the area from here to here, right? Remember, we can't look up 1.41 yet. We have to first calculate the z-score for 1.41. So let's go ahead and do that. The z-score for 1.41 will be 1.41 minus the 1.17 divided by 0 0.08. And if I do that, I end up with the answer. Let's see. 1.41 minus 1.17 divided by 0 0.08 should give us 3 even, okay? So we get this answer 3.00. Okay, so that's about three standard deviations above average. When I look up 3 on my Z chart, then I'll get the area from here to here, and then I'll do the subtraction from 0.5 to get the area in the tail that I'm looking for. So let's go to the chart and look up 3.0. Okay, so we want to look up 3.0 on the curve. We're going to have to move this curve way down to get to the 3.0 row. And there it is. And that very first number is the 3.00 position. So that number is 0 0.4987. 0 0.4987. Okay, so when I look up 3.00, I get... 0.4987. That's the area from here to here. So I have to now calculate the area in this part in the tail by doing again the 0 0.500 minus the 0.4987. And again, doing this subtraction, 10 take away 7 is 3, 9 take away 8 is 1, and then 0, 0. So we get the answer 0.0013. So 0.13%, which is very small. So the probability that someone's um, chest to waist ratio is greater than 1.41, which is the ideal, is the same as the probability that a z-score is greater than three. And that works out to be just 0.13%. So a very small probability of that, a very small portion of the society.